Well, hello there. Welcome to Nana's Storytime. And today's story is going to be The Five Chinese Brothers by Claire Bishop. And so here they are, the five Chinese brothers. Let's count them to make sure there's five. One, two, three, four, five. So there they are. And it looks like they're on a beach. And there's their house. And it says that the pictures are by Kurt Weiss. Sometimes it's nice to know who does the pictures as well. Sometimes books also tell us who they're written for. And this one's very nice. It says, to my father who made me love China and to my mother, a born storyteller. Once upon a time, there were five Chinese brothers and they all looked exactly alike. Look at their beautiful house. It has a different kind of a roof than I have at my house. I like that. It's very pretty. And a neat boat with a really cool sail. They lived with their mother in a little house not far from the sea. There they are sitting on their stools looking out at the sea. And they really do look just alike. They had some special talents. The first Chinese brother could swallow the sea. The second Chinese brother had an iron neck. The third Chinese brother could stretch and stretch and stretch his legs. The fourth Chinese brother could not be burned. And the fifth Chinese brother could hold his breath indefinitely. Every morning, the first Chinese brother would go fishing, and whatever the weather, he would come back to the village with beautiful and rare fish, which he caught and could sell at the market for a very good price. One day, as he was leaving the marketplace, a little boy stopped him and asked if he could go fishing with him. No, it could not be done, said the first Chinese brother. And there he was out there catching some really neat, rare fish. But the little boy begged and begged and begged. And finally, the first Chinese brother consented. Under one condition, said he, and that is that you shall obey me promptly. Yes, yes, the little boy promised. Early the next morning, the first Chinese brother and the little boy went down to the beach. Remember, said the first Chinese brother, when I, you must obey me promptly. When I make a sign for you to come back, you must come back at once. Yes, 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 said the little boy. He wants to protect the little boy. Then the first Chinese brother, he swallowed the sea. Remember his special power? He could swallow the whole sea. Could you swallow the whole sea? No. And all the fish were left high and dry at the bottom of the sea. And all the treasures of the sea lay uncovered. The little boy was delighted. He ran here and there, stuffing his pockets with shells and finding all kinds of neat things. But look over there is the first Chinese brother holding his breath. I wonder if he can hold his breath a long, 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 long time. There's the treasure at the bottom of the sea and I don't see the little boy. He must be somewhere out of the picture here. Near the shore, the first Chinese brother gathered some fish while he kept holding the sea and the little boy to come back. The little boy saw him, but he paid no attention. Uh -oh. He's not following the directions. Now look at the first Chinese brother. 
with the C in his mouth, looking so, there he is. He's making huge hand gestures. Come back, come back, come back. He's saying with both of his hands, the first Chinese brother made great movements with his arms that meant come back. But did the little boy care? Not a bit. And he ran further away. Then the first Chinese brother felt the sea swelling inside and he made desperate measures to call the boy back. But the little boy made faces at him and fled as fast as he could. Oh. The first Chinese brother held the sea until he thought he was going to burst. And all of a sudden, the sea forced its way out of his mouth, went back into its head. And the alone, he was arrested, put in prison, tried, and he was condemned to have his head cut off. In the morning of the execution, he said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go and bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair, said the judge. And there he is with the judge. So the first Chinese brother went home, and the second Chinese brother took his place. Do you remember what the second Chinese brother's special power was? All the people were assembled on the village square to witness the execution. The executioner took his sword and made a mighty blow. This is a pretend story, by the way. It's just imaginary. But the second Chinese brother got up and smiled. Do you remember his secret power? He was the one with the iron neck, and they simply could not cut his head off. Everybody was angry, and they decided he should be drowned instead. On the morning of the execution, the second Chinese brother said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go home and say goodbye to my mother? It is only fair, said the judge. So the second Chinese brother went home, and the third Chinese brother came back in his place. Do you remember what the third Chinese brother can do? Has something to do with his legs, something his legs can do. He was put on a boat and pushed out to sea. When they were far out of the ocean, the third Chinese brother was thrown overboard. So there he is being thrown overboard. Oh, check this out. See how the book is? It goes like this now. Because look at the superpower that this Chinese brother had. Do you remember? As he began to stretch and stretch and stretch his legs way down to the bottom of the sea, here he is, his legs just can stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. Oops, I gotta turn it this way. His smiling face was still bobbing up on top of the waves. He simply could not be. Everybody was very angry and they decided that he should be burned. On the morning of the execution, the third Chinese brother said to the judge, your honor, Will you allow me to go home and bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair, said the judge. So the third Chinese brother went home and the fourth Chinese brother came back in his place. He was tied to a stake. Fire was set to it and the people stood around watching it. In the midst of the flames, they heard him say, hmm, this is quite pleasant. Bring more wood. For he was the one that could not be burned. Everybody was getting more and more angry by the minute, and they all decided to smother him. The next morning of the ex on the morning of the execution, the fourth Chinese brother said to the judge, Your Honor, will you allow me to go home and bid my mother goodbye? It is only fair, said the judge. So the fourth Chinese brother went home 
and the fifth Chinese brother came back in his place. A large brick oven had been built on the village square, and it had been stuffed with whipped cream. The fifth Chinese brother was shoveled into the oven, right in the middle of the cream. The door was shut, and everyone waited and waited. Hmm. Do you remember what his secret power was? They were not going to be tricked again. So they waited all night and even a little after dawn, just to be sure. Then they opened the door and pulled him out. He shook himself and said, my, that was a good sleep. Everyone stared open mouthed and round eyed. But the judge came forward and said, we tried to get rid of you in every possible way, and it simply could not be done. It must be that you are innocent. And you and I know he was innocent because he tried to get the little boy to come back, but he wouldn't. Yes, yes, the people shouted. And so they let him go home. And the five Chinese brothers and their mother lived happily for many, many years. And a tale means a story that's not true, just a tale that you kind of like to tell. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Nana loves you.